Chris with RC Worsting Company here today and uh, we're going to take a look at the SJE Rhombus float switch and uh, attaching that float switch to a piece of pipe without using a float clip. We're actually going to use uh, just electrical tape so I've got uh, a small roll of that here and it's wanting to roll off the table so we'll set that back down. So um, of course as I mentioned the SJE Rhombus Signal Master float switch is what we're going to be using today excellent uh, high quality float switch. Uh, you're not likely to have to do this activity again anytime soon if you go with that uh, SJE Rama's float switch. This being a control switch doesn't require much of a tether so we're going to only use probably about three four inches worth of, worth of tether um, for this application so we're going to have the float switch operate in about that much of a range. So we'll get this extra cordage out of the way here and get right into it. So once we've kind of identified the length of tether that we want to use, we'll get our tape ready to go. And to make it easy, you can even wrap it onto your, onto your pipe like so, so you don't run the risk of dropping it uh, down into the, into the tank. And importantly, you want to bring it uh, up to the pipe so that it's horizontal when you go ahead and perform your taping. Of course, this isn't going to be adjustable like a pipe clamp would be, so you want to get your final point set and then uh, go ahead and wrap that with, with tape a number of times. I typically like to wrap it, um, oh, like five or six times um, to ensure that the tape is going to hold and that the float switch, um, you know, isn't going to fall off and the float's not going to fall, or the, uh, the tape's not going to fall off and get sucked up by the pump or anything like that. So now we've got the float switch here, but we're far from done. Um, so importantly, we've maintained the horizontal uh, travel to minimize any stress on the wire and, um, and maximize that float life. And what we now need to do is take that, that same approach and, um, and get, the, get the cord on out of the tank. So I'll kind of turn this around so it's easier to see here. What we want to do is create a loop that's roughly about two and a half or so inches in diameter, uh, two to two and a half inches in diameter, and um, that loop is going to minimize any strain on the transition as the wire goes vertically out of the tank or into your splice box or what have you. Um, so what we want to do now at this point, get our tape ready again, and um, start making some more wraps. And I'll do, again, about five or so wraps on this side. Tear that off there. So now we've got something that looks just something like that. And uh, if you see, the, the tape's kind of oriented um, in, in that fashion. So I'm going to come at it from the other direction. And going through the loop, this is where it's important to leave yourself uh, a, a large enough loop because if you're using a brand new roll of tape and your loop's not big enough, you're, you're certainly not going to be getting that, that tape through there. So, um, you know, adjust accordingly and a larger loop's not going to hurt anything, but you do run the risk of uh, other floats potentially getting hung up on that if, if you have this hanging out too far, kind of like an ear or something like that. So what you can do to, uh, to kind of get that out of the way if needed is apply some additional tape to kind of hold this uh, tight to the pipe. Uh, but in this application or in this example, that's not necessary. You've got the general idea of how to apply a float properly. And uh, this is also a format that's going to maximize float life. Now, understand, you know, there's, there's more than one way to, uh, to attach a float switch to pipe using tape. But this is a pre preferred method that we've used for a long time and it works really well and provides a long-lasting solution. So uh, if you like this video, found it useful, uh, please do like and subscribe to our channel. And uh, for floats and other related equipment, check out rcworst.com. We'll see you next time.